Well, today is a good day. Lexus is downstairs dropping off a brand new orange Lexus RCF. So let's go check it out. We've got it for the week. I'm excited to see what it's all about. There it is, the Lexus RCF. Wanted to take this car to a little bit more of a remote location since it was dropped off uh, by Lexus in pretty crowded of an area. But this is the Lexus RCF in Molten Pearl. Let me know what you guys think of this color. I actually really like it. Of course, it's very, very showy, um, but it suits the car well. It's incredibly aggressive with Lexus's styling cue, the spindle grill, and the cutouts on the side that are more exaggerated than something that's like on the RC350 F Sport. We've also got 20 spoke 19 inch wheels. That's a lot of spokes, which I think look really nice. We've got matching orange paint calipers and let's take a look inside the interior. They did a good job there as well. We've got a predominantly digital display. Uh, the speedometer is of course analog. We can change different modes uh, in the center console here. When we put it into sport mode, check this out, it changes uh, the actual display, put it into Sport Plus, and then you can turn it into track mode if you want. Bunch of different settings. Eight speed automatic transmission that actually responds really, really well. I don't really like the way the dash looks. You've also got nice carbon fiber trim, Alcantara accents. I've driven the car for honestly about five minutes and I'm actually really impressed uh, initially with how the car handles. The initial turn-in is really, really instant. It feels like a lighter car than it is. Uh, and I'm uh, really blown away by how nimble this car feels. The eight-speed automatic transmission shifts really fast. Uh, it doesn't deny you downshifts at any point. And the induction noise when you're flooring it is really awesome. And it is something that you miss with the BMW M4. Remember, if you guys aren't already subscribed, please do so, it helps us out a bunch. And also, stay up to date on all the latest things we're doing, as well as behind the scenes, cool pictures and stuff like that, on our Instagram, follow us at Vehicle Virgins. About to take the RCF on a back road for the first time in manual mode, a little squirrely. Oh, they just repaved this road, awesome. So five liter V8, 467 horsepower. The one gripe that a lot of people have with this is it weighs 400 pounds more than its competitor, the BMW M4. But honestly, the steering feels so great. And with the performance package that's 5,500 bucks, it comes with this torque vectoring differential, which originally I didn't know what this button here, TVD, meant. It was a little confusing, but it is torque vectoring differential and you can have different settings. Uh, let's put it in. It's in standard mode right now. Now I'm in slalom, so it prepares the rear differential for quicker turns back and forth. And then track mode uh, heightens the stability of the rear axle so you don't crash at high speeds. Eight-speed automatic transmission. Shifts pretty fast for an auto. It's not a double clutch like uh, the M4 is, but works well. When you're full on the gas, you've got uh, a sound generator in the front that is in tune with the RPMs and the level of throttle inputs. So it actually gets louder when you punch it instead of just slowly on the throttle, which I guess is nice. I mean, before I found out that uh, it was electronically controlled, I thought the car was a little bit cooler than it is, but that's the way things are going, especially with turbocharged cars. I am a little bit surprised that they had to do that considering it's a naturally aspirated V8, but everyone wants more refined, quieter interiors, but then they also want to hear the engine at the same time, and there's not really a great way to do that. So we're gonna try uh, a bit of a launch. I'm just gonna step on the gas, but zero to 60, about four and a half seconds, which actually isn't all that good for a $79,000 performance car. I mean, the BMW M4 and the C63 are in the mid to high three second range, not four seconds, but let's see how it feels. It's definitely quick, it's not insanely fast, but I honestly, I like this car a lot more than I imagined I would, and actually a lot more than it seems like 
the general consensus of auto journalists and people in general, they kind of think this car weighs too much, it's a little bit overpriced, but it's not really overpriced. The base price is right around exactly where the M4 is. Um, yeah, it weighs 400 pounds more, but it doesn't feel overly heavy. It handles really well. It sounds better than the M4 because it's naturally aspirated and it's not a six cylinder. And it's nice in the interior as well. I really like the carbon fiber bits, the Alcantara. I'm not really a big fan of this center console right here and these air vents. Mm, I don't really like those at all. Um, the entertainment screen is about the right size, but they do need to fix uh, the control. Using this touchpad is kind of a little bit difficult and not that accurate. Everyone nowadays is using uh, kind of a turnstile knob uh, where you can change different directions to select things and click it down. I uh, like the one in the Mercedes multimedia system a lot more than this. I do like how the temperature, uh, Cadillacs have this as well, is touch control and you just scroll up and down. Ooh, it changes so fast. It's fun. And the volume has the nicest uh, tactile feedback. Oh, something about scrolling this is just really pleasing. I'm going to attempt to get into the back of the car. This is where my driving position is. I sit closer to the steering wheel than most people do, so it's a bit of an advantage for me fitting back here. Oh, let's see. All right, so headroom is not, not very good at all. <laughs> my head is uh, not able to be fully upright whatsoever. However, the back of the seats, they slope inwards a lot, so I do actually have about a quarter of an inch of legroom. So that part's not bad, but for a long drive, I mean, this would be pretty miserable. But all of the sports coupes don't have very much space at all in the back. It's more for... Uh, your kids or groceries or if you really want to cram someone back here for uh, a short trip. The point of this video was just to give you kind of a general overview of the Lexus without going into uh, the performance details so much as we will in the actual review. Uh, took delivery of the car. I've liked it a lot so far. I'm kind of trying to figure out what a great place to put point of view style videos is. Um, I know a lot of people like them but I've kind of found that standalone point of views with no talking after about a minute do kind of get a little bit boring. Now comment below if you if you disagree and you'd like to see more of them, but I thought maybe this style of video, uh, when we get a new car, do a little general first impressions and then include the point of view after that. So that's what I'm gonna do, have a point of view of the Lexus RCF on a fun back road. Uh, I hope you found this video good, poop, bap. Let me know what you think of this style of video, the rear, let me know what you think of this style of video. The real review is coming out soon. Look forward to seeing you next video.